With the threat of an AI-controlled future, time is running out on Earth. But don't worry, DC All Access has your back. Let's go cover to cover. Weeks after the breakup of Ronnie and Jason as Firestorm, Ronnie is called to the Justice League satellite as a sort of intervention. The League urges Ronnie and Jason to reunite. The world needs Firestorm. Ronnie finally confesses he's responsible for the death of Green Arrow and quits the Justice League entirely. Jason does the same. If Red Arrow can replace Ollie, they can find a replacement for Firestorm. Elsewhere, Amiko, the half-sister of Oliver Queen, tracks down Big Barda, an Earth-2 refugee. Amiko tells Barda other heroes from Earth-2 are being held prisoner, and with the help of John Diggle, they're going to free them. Barda, Amiko, and Diggle make their way to a secret island Oliver used to prepare for the battle he knew was coming. There, Barda meets an alive and well Green Arrow who welcomes her to his army. The war on Cadmus has begun. On Cadmus Island, Grifter and 50 Sue discover Lana Lang from Earth 2 is secretly working for Cadmus. It doesn't take long for 50 Sue to become attached to Lana, even wanting her and Slade to get married so they can form a family. Weird. Faraday says something is corrupting the island system, but before they can discover the cause, the Earth 2 cells open, releasing the prisoners. The prisoners have been possessed using the implants placed inside them by Cadmus. The freed Earth 2 heroes destroy the island under the power of their new master, Brother Eye. 50 Sue makes a deal with Brother Eye. He's not to harm her and the others as long as they don't interfere with his plans. Cole and the others make their way to Faraday's, where 50 Sue proposes a simple plan. They end Brother Eye themselves. Back in New York, Mr. Terrific goes on the news, alerting everyone of Batman's break-in at Terrificek. Terrific claims Terry wanted to steal the U-Sphere technology, declaring Terry public enemy number one. Terrific is unsure he did the right thing, but Brother Eye reassures him and says he can't wait for them to be able to talk about it soon, face to face. With Mr. Terrific outing Terry, his tenuous allies threaten to abandon him before Plastique threatens to blow everyone up. She says they're breaking into Terrificek whether they like it or not, but she has a plan of her own. Meanwhile, an out-of-control rampage rages in Metropolis, with Lois caught in the crossfire. Luckily, she's saved by Superman, who's quickly overwhelmed by Rampage. About to be killed with no other options, Superman says the one word that can save him, Shazam. Lightning strikes, knocking back Rampage, and revealing the masked Superman is not Clark Kent, but Billy Batson, aka Shazam. Billy urges her not to expose his secret, but Lois goes with her gut and publishes the truth. She's left wondering if Shazam is the man under the mask, then where is the real Man of Steel? Back in space, Frankenstein, Amethyst, and Hawkman follow the Stormwatch distress beacon to a small planet. Their ship systems immediately fail and they crash into a large metal crater. They're attacked and captured by the person they were sent to help, the Engineer. To make matters worse, the nth metal in Hawkman's arm is causing Frankenstein to have visions of a dark future. The Engineer confronts her prisoners, revealing they're not on a planet at all, but a spacecraft. The spacecraft of her master, Brainiac. Next stop, Earth. At Stormwatch headquarters, Ray Palmer is chosen to form a new Stormwatch to stop the Brainiac threat. If he fails, it could mean the end of everything. On Earth, a mysterious ancient cyborg is making its way towards Africa, slaughtering anything in its path. It's hunting for someone. Luckily, Constantine finds that someone first, Kal-El, the one and only Superman. John tells Clark that Brainiac is coming, and Superman is the only one who can stop him. Clark wants no part of it after what happened during the war. He says the world has a new Superman. He can handle it. After the article on Shazam, Red Robin breaks into Lois's office. Lois asks why Tim faked his death after the war. Tim says when his friends were killed, he just couldn't cope, so he disappeared. Lois says he needs to tell Madison the truth before it's too late. She then shows him the box of clues that helped her track him down in the first place. Tim recognizes the arrow. It's the same red arrow that saved him during the war. Tim thinks Roy sent it to Lois for a reason, and they need to figure out why. Tim follows Lois's advice and tells Madison the truth about him and the Teen Titans. It backfires and Madison leaves him. At Terrificek, Batman and the others break in. He and Coyle go for the U-Sphere, while Terry hacks Terrific's database in hopes of locating the Brother Eye satellite. Meanwhile, Plastique finds what she's been really looking for, her future self. The shock of seeing it is too much for her and she breaks down. Terry helps her escape, but betrays Key and Coyle by setting off the alarm. 
terrific visits Key and Coyle. He's impressed with their work and wants to hire them as long as they're willing to give him the name of the person they were working for. The Key agrees, saying that they figured out who hired them for the job, Bruce Wayne. In the future, Mr. Terrific is not dead after all. He's alive, protected by Brother Eye, who still views him as a father. Brother Eye has discovered that Bruce sent Terry back in time to stop him. He asks for Terrific's help extracting information from Bruce's brain because he's going back in time himself to stop Terry, permanently. So now you're all caught up and ready to pick up issue number 21 of Futures End on shelves now, or on tablets or on tablets that are sitting on shelves. I mean, you can really read it any way that you want to. Make sure you subscribe to DC All Access for everything DC-related every day.